In this video, we'll continue our discussion of directional derivatives by doing one more example here. Um, notice this example is a, um, the input, the domain is in three dimensions, so the output is a fourth dimension, a fourth dimensional figure. Um, so we can still calculate the gradient and everything like that, and it'll still have the same type of meaning. Geometrically, though, we kind of lose a little bit of our meaning since four dimensions is hard for us to understand. Okay, so directional derivative, it's the same definition. Um, it still has to be a unit vector, but now it's just the gradient of f, and it's just going to have an x, y, and a z component, and we're going to dot that with a u that should have an x, y, and a z component. So first thing we need to do is create a u. They gave us two points, so let's find a vector. I got 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And then I got 6 minus 2, which is 4. We have to check to see if this is a unit vector. All my mistakes would happen there. I'm getting, I'm like happy and I just keep going and I forget to check to see if it's a unit vector and fix it if not. So be very careful. It's very easy to work past that. I got four plus 16 plus 16. That's gonna be 20 plus 16, which is 36. It's a nice clean six. So the vector I'm going to use is going to be the unit vector, one third, negative two thirds, and two-thirds. All right, I have that. <clears throat> Remember, we're trying to dot that with our gradient. So the gradient of f is the three-component vector of the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and a partial with respect to z. So I need to find all three of those components. All right, this is going to have symmetry, thankfully. Um, let me rewrite this function to help us out. So f of x, y, z is going to be x, y, z to the one half, All right? So that half comes down. I get x, y, z to the negative one half. Then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside with respect to x, which is just going to give me a y, z, All right? So that gets me y, z over the square root two times the square root x, y, z. I'm going to use symmetry for the other three parts. You can see that we'll just have on top, we will just have the other two variables. So this is gonna be x, z over two square roots of x, y, z. That's due to symmetry. And then we also have f, z. Okay, f, z is going to be x, y over two times the square root of x, y, z. Sorry for my bad handwriting there. I'm like looking up and I'm like, ooh, I got bad for a minute. All right, so I have those three. We have the point, remember for a directional derivative of f, and then it's the point 4, 2, 2. That's in question. It's the gradient with those plugged in times the unit vector, or dotted with the unit vector, essentially the same thing here. So I'm going to plug those in. Okay, I got 4. The first one's yz, so it's going to be 4 over 2 times the square root of 4 times 2 times 2, which is 16. I'm just going to do that for a moment um, until I get everything. I got 8 over 2 times the square root of 16, and then xy, which is also 8 over 2 times the square root of 16. I am <clears throat> aware that that's going to clean up quite a bit. We wrote it, so we should finish our statement. So we have that. Okay, so the vector is going to be 4 over, okay, I got 4 over 8, so it's a half. Um, and then 8 over, that's going to be 4 over 4, which is 1. And that's kind of nice. Okay, dotted with 1 third, negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds. And then we dot that, so I got 1 sixth minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, giving us a 1 sixth. So that is the directional derivative, whatever it means in four space. Um, I almost went down the tangent line thing, but uh, geometrically it feels a little different. It's going to have different meanings, um, but we can actually calculate these things just geometrically our brain struggles.